Oh, I am. How do you know? It just says you're now alive. I'm now on. <laughs> yes, okay, so here it also says I'm on. Good afternoon, or good noon. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello there, and welcome to the Frick Museum's Instagram live page for the Frida. Frida. Kahlo exhibition. My name is Fran Flaherty and welcome to my kitchen. I'm part of the Not White Collective um, and we are collaborating right now with the museum um, in conjunction with the new Frida Kahlo show called Frida Kahlo, an intimate portrait. And um, I know in the title it says um, Okay, wait. Before I go on, I'm just a little <laughs> nervous because the live thing didn't go on. I'm going to chill out for a minute. I just need 10 seconds to center. And this is live from my kitchen. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm back. Um, so, welcome to my kitchen. This is the second time we're doing this. The first time... <laughs> The collective got together and did an Instagram live show. It was back in November. And that was for the vote. Um, and I just got a text from Lisa Viscusi about checking to see if I need anything before I go live. And I'm like, no, I'm good, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I think we're okay. Okay. So, um, where was I? Anyway, welcome to my kitchen. And um, I was at the exhibit last Wednesday. I went to see the show, the, the Frida Kahlo show. And it is just, it's, it is really an intimate exhibit. I walked in and then the, the, the photos are all from her own photo album. And um, they're arranged chronologically, I think. Um, from her younger days until she uh, started her career with them, um, then got married to Diego Rivera, and um, the, her later life when she um, had her uh, pregnancy and lost her baby and things like that. And then in the back of the room, there's another exhibit, color photograph exhibit. Um, I should say because most of Frida's pictures were all in black and white. Um, in the back of the room, at the end of the exhibit, there is a color photograph exhibit um, by Nicholas Murray, who happened to be one of Frida's lovers for a very long time, like 10 years or something like that. Um, and uh, she was a frequent uh, subject in his photos, and that's beautiful as well. Um, I loved walking around the museum and looking at just like, it's just looking like through my own family's photo albums, you know, pictures of people and things like that, or family members, places in the house, and you know, just normal events going on. So, I thought what we would do, is I know that we're supposed to be making something from our own kitchen, but a friend of mine introduced me to this book, which is called, Frida's Fiestas. Now this book um, was written and by Guadalupe Rivera, who is uh, Frida's stepdaughter, Diego Rivera's daughter with, um, uh, oh, I'm gonna forget her first name. <coughs> Marin is the last name. Um, uh, I don't know, I can't remember. So Guadalupe and Ruth were two daughters that Diego Rivera had to his, in his prior marriage. And um, Guadalupe co-wrote this book with a woman named Marie Pierre Cole, C-O-L-L-E. Anybody who's French out there? Kind of like let me know if that if I if I spelled it wrong or right or whatever. Okay. Anyway. anyone wants to join into the live, if anyone wants to join into the live video, I just, just a little housekeeping here. 
Um, there is a little prompt in the request, uh, in the in the Instagram feed that says request to be, uh, send a request to be in Frick Pittsburgh live video. I will be happy to, you know, have the people join later on um, once we get things going. Okay, so, kitchen, in the kitchen with Fran is not complete unless it includes a special guest and um, have my family around. So. I want to introduce everyone to my mom. Hi. Abby, Lucy, Abia, or what? <laughs> mom, can you introduce yourself to everyone? Hi, my name is Lucy Ledonia. I'm proud mom to a friend. So right now, mom, we have ten. We have ten people um, watching us. Okay. So. And somebody gave this a heart. Hello, thank you. Heart to you too. Um, but I'm not. Um... Oh, Zena says hi, mom. <laughs> okay, so remember what we rehearsed, mom? Yes, dear. No, you don't, because you're supposed to ask me why I'm wearing all my jewelry. Well, we did it. Oh yeah. <laughs> loved adorning herself with jewelry and she especially loved uh, stones and jade and um, so I figured I'd channel Frida and I'm very uncomfortable right now with all of these so I'm going to take them off but while I take them off I'm just going to give you a story of all of them. This is a ring that mom and I got when we were in Spain in Sagrada Familia. This is a ring, a jade ring for my mom's wedding dowry 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 back in the mid 60s right mm -hmm. um this is a ring that i bought um after my grandmother died we were walking around san francisco after her funeral and we decided to just go shopping <laughs> to fill the void this is a meteorite ring that was uh given to be by my friend edna and this is yeah, a what is that? <laughs> this is a bracelet given to me by my not white collective sister, Zena Ruiz, who was on the Frick Museum's Instagram last week. Hi, Zena. <clears throat> and why are we wearing the same shoes? I think. Oh wait, we'll talk about our partner shoes later. <laughs> but anyway, Zena, I don't know where you got this, but I do love this bracelet, and I don't use it because. You know, I'm not comfortable with all of these things hanging on me. But um, just a little note, Pittsburgh, Zena is running for council in North Braddock. Woo! Zena? Really? Yeah, she oh, is. We're going to have a Not White Sister Collective in the council of North Braddock. So excited. This is mom. You gave this to me. It's from Taiwan. In Taiwan. Okay. And this, um, it was given to me by Mary Beth Lauderdale, a very good friend of mine. Um, and this is another jade bracelet. I figure I channeled Frida's jade love for jade, which I bought again after my grandmother died. This is from my son, Lucas. These earrings were made by Liam, my son, Liam. This necklace was given to me by my son, Sean. Um, there you go. Did I get it? Let me. Let me. Okay. And while I'm doing that, again, jade ring that I got after my grandmother had passed. Um, there's a little necklace for my son. Um, Sean, and of course my wedding ring and my um, uh, past, present, and future diamond ring from my husband, Tim, which I'm not taking off because I don't take it off. And last but not the least, this is a bracelet. Um, who was, it was owned by Adele Rosenberg Blumberg. And there's a really important story with this because this is like my 10 degrees of separation with Frida Kahlo, and I'll tell you about it later. <clears throat> Still move this. Okay, so we are going to 
make something, and mom and I have never, we've never made this recipe, right? Let's just say, so we're going on the fly, right? <laughs> yeah. We did a little bit of, um, we did a little bit of prep, but this book, uh, Frida's Fiestas, and Zaina asked if um, it's available in the Frick Museum. I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, I have more jewelry on. I'm comfortable. I bought this in Banff. Canada with my um when my childhood friend Isa and her wife Tammy when we went out there in the Columbia ice fields and where is this from um I don't know I'm gonna take from China China. from China when the last time we went to Beijing they're, they're really like I feel like a Christmas tree <laughs> so <laughs> anyway I do not know if this book is available at the Frick Museum shop it's called Frida's Fiesta Again, written by Guadalupe Rivera and co-written by Marie Pierre Colley. Colley. Um, again, Guadalupe Rivera, whose also, nickname is also Pico, um, co-wrote this book with her. So it's really neat because in this book, there's stories and pictures of certain menus. You want to like focus in, honey, so that they can see. So before every set of recipes, there is pictures and little story that Guadalupe has written about her stepmother. And they're really cool stories because it, um, it really shows how Frida Kahlo was all about the culture of care. She was such a caregiver. She accepted her stepdaughters into her life with no issues and treated them as her own. And as you know, yeah, Frida Kahlo's relationship with Diego Rivera was very complicated because Diego had a lot of lovers, a lot of previous uh, wives and things like that, right? And so there are some just gorgeous pictures here, recreations of the festivities that Frida Kahlo had uh, made. So um, like this is their wedding wedding uh, menu and see so their wedding cake and stuff like that. Anyway, so the dish that we are going to make today is from Frida, one of Frida's birthdays, um, birthday celebration, okay? And there's no picture of the birthday celebration here, but this is a picture in the, from the Blue House. Um, and uh, the story is that she always had these big, huge celebrations and always had mariachi band, and it's just, it's just she loved life. She was larger than life. Frida was always celebratory and trying to find happiness and joy and things like that. And I, I really admire that, um, uh, as, especially as a disabled artist, as Frida being a disabled artist who had experienced a lot of disability in her life, um, just being able to just constantly look for joy in, in her life, especially with food. She had polio, right? <coughs> she had uh, yeah, she had polio, but she had also had several accidents. Um, mm -hmm. She had an accident in her younger years when she was, I think, her late teens or early 20s, and then she had another one um, later on after she and Diego got married. Um, and then she had, uh, uh, she, uh, had a miscarriage or a uh, medically necessary abortion. Anyway, so she had a lot, experienced a lot of health issues in her life, so. Anyway, what we're gonna make from this recipe, from this menu, is called pork stew from Puebla. Super simple, and, but mom and I have never done it, and we're gonna try to do it right now. So, the ingredients are two onions chopped, right? Three tablespoons of lard, which is, what, pig fat, but we're just gonna use avocado oil. You know, we have to update everything. Um, four chorizos, peeled and sliced in rounds. Um, I love chorizo, and I, I think it's a great, great ingredient using a lot of things, but I live in the suburbs, and um, have a really busy life, so wasn't able to go find chorizo. So we are using, what are we using instead of chorizo, Mom? The kielbasa. Kielbasi. That, and that is a shout out to my Polish mother-in-law, <laughs> uh, who taught me how to eat kibasi and pierogies and stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what else? <laughs> Six large tomatoes.
tomatoes roasted, peeled, and seeded. Right. Right here. Here. So we're not roasting the tomatoes ourselves because yeah. why when you can buy them? Again? That's very convenient unless you want to do it from, from scratch. Right. right. And, and Mom and I were having this debate about whether we should use liquid smoke in it to... Um, well, you want it to like, uh, and then try to make it this. closer to... Uh, yeah. But you don't think we should use it? Well, it might help. We'll see. <laughs> fake smoke. You don't like it? I don't think it's the same. Fake but. smoke. Fake smoke. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then two and a half pounds of pork shoulder cooked. So what we've done with the pork shoulder is we cooked it in the Instapot in the pressure cooker for an hour and a half. And now the meat is really nice and tender. Three medium potatoes cooked and cubed. All right. We're good. So, Mom, so it's are the potatoes cooked. cooked already? The potatoes cooked, the uh, pork is shredded and cooked and shredded. Okay. And the pork is cooked with uh, uh, garlic and um, onion. Okay. So, All right. Okay. So cool. We're gonna start. So, as everybody knows, this is what it's supposed to look like. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, Mom. So, I'm going to start with this one. What is that? Uh, I mean the, uh, okay. yeah, it's part there. All right. Well, it says here, huh? chopped and drained. Okay, never mind. So this one is already uh, it, in adobo sauce. So yeah. Oh yeah, chipotle, so chipotle yeah. chili in adobo sauce. Like yeah. Uh, Can we not put too much? Because then Tim won't be able to eat it. Tim, and my husband really doesn't like spicy food too much. Can you just put half, ma? Can you just put half? Uh, we'll just do this and then we put half in here. Ah, good. Okay, good. All right, so now mom's gonna puree the chilies yeah. and then we're gonna. Whoops. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just gotta cut the onions. Hang on. We gotta calm down here. Okay. Sorry. How about how about we switch, Ma? Hmm? Ma, put it there. Okay. Here, 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 here. Ready? In 1973, they were in Mexico, 
because Max, who's an art historian and photographer, was writing about Diego Rivera's murals. And they were there and they rented a house in, I'm going to forget the name of the city. I, 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 it started with Theo, Theo, I don't know. Anyway, so, so they rented a house and this house belonged to the parents of one of Max's students when they were in LA, uh, one of his um, art his, history student named Hayden. Phillips Herrera. So Max and Joyce and Nick were doing their thing in Mexico. Max was studying. Joyce was, you know, taking in all of the all of the just incredible patterns and decorations that you see there. Um, and she was told to go visit the blue house in Diego Rivera's mausoleum, which she did. And uh, Joyce told me, I mean, I can read her email verbatim, but I'm not going to because it's like paragraphs long. But anyway. She told me that it was very important for her and influential because she was just starting to get into patterns and decorations. So 73, that would have been, that's the year I was born. Can you hear the stories that I'm telling you? Uh -huh. Can you hear the stories yes, that I'm telling you? Okay. Yes, me. So 73, that's the year I was born. So Joyce would have been, what, 20, 30, 30. Yeah, we're 30 years apart. Um, anyway, you can read more about Joyce Kozlov, K-O-Z-L-O-F-F. -F. Just Google her. She's on Wikipedia. She has a website and all that. Um, is Joyce here? Is Joyce there? I don't know. Joyce, are you here? If you are, you should like ask to join into the live. <laughs> you can be in the live. Um, you can be in the live feed as well. Because I'm going to get some of your stories wrong. Okay, so now, well, I'm supposed to be cutting it too while I'm talking. Whoops. Um, so, you convinced, Joyce, you convinced Hayden Herrera to go and see uh, the Blue House, right? Which turned into Hayden's um, graduate thesis in NYU, um, which then she turned into a book which became a pretty famous book um, called uh, Frida, the autobiography of Frida Kahlo, which also became the movie in 2002 where Selma Hayek um, uh, starred as Frida Kahlo. So it's also important to mention that Joyce is a was a graduate of Carnegie Tech and Joyce's uncle lived in Pittsburgh. So that's our 10, 11 degrees of separation between Pittsburgh and Frida Kahlo. Okay. Ta -da! Okay. I'm going to start sauteing the uh, onions first. Okay. I'm using avocado oil. Okay. Saute the onions in hot lard until translucent. I need to Water out and then it will sauté faster. Always layer the flavor. Layer, layer, layer the flavor, right?
So while the onions are translucent thing, then we want to cook the uh, it says, yep, yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, I don't want to already. Alright, so now we're gonna try this. Are okay. you gonna do you wanna put that in? We'll wait, 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 yeah. I'm gonna ask him because he might not eat it. Honey, you smell it and see if you want it in there. Okay, he's nodding his hair in his head and said, okay, yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's just put it up. Liquid smoke has water, natural hickory smoke flavor, vinegar, molasses, and caramel color. It says shake well before each use. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So while mom's doing that, where's I'm, my chip today? Your what? Oh, I'm gonna um, make something to go with this. Um, I recently have had to go gluten free, soy free, corn free, dairy free, egg free, and a whole big slew of um, allergies right now. Um, which contribute to a lot of um, health issues and then contribute to my arthritis and things like that. So um, I've had to modify my diet a lot. And I don't know, about 10 years ago, a good friend of mine, her name is Jennifer Rush, I don't know if she's on, um, but she has a son who is, uh, also has the same diet that I did. And I started getting to know like gluten free and soy free corn free stuff then but i'm really much more active in it right now so i've turned to several different types of starches to replace some things like turkey and other bread or things like that one of the things that i use is called cassava flour and the cassava flour is from the cassava root or some nice cassava, the same as yuca. Huh? This is yuca. Yuca, you know the yuca? Is yeah. that the same yeah. Same as cassava? Yes. Okay, so yuca and cassava are the same thing. And well, there are different types of cassava also. So they're like the yellowy and the white. Okay. Well, I don't know which one this has been turned but into. But it is cassava. All the characteristics are the same, just the color and even taste the same. Just a little bit different. So according to the, the package, it's like um, the, the substitution is three quarters of a cup of cassava flour to one cup of cassava. Okay, let me help you out there, Mom. I never realized how easy it was to make tortillas until I needed to eat them gluten free. So, I don't have a recipe for this. I'm just gonna try to go ahead and make it. I, we rarely ever have recipes for anything. Right, Mom? Ma, what? Do we normally use recipes? No. Okay. All right, tell everybody what you're doing. So you've got the... Well, I got the uh, the tomato sauce, the chipotle, and uh, uh, all in here. And I'm really just going to let it uh, stew a little bit. And I have this uh, shredded cooked pork. with uh, It was cooked with garlic and onion. It's just boiled. So, and then we're going to put it together. Yeah, because it says right here, puree the tomatoes with three of the chilies. After pureeing the remaining chilies to the chorizo pan, simmer for about 10 minutes. Shred the cooked pork and add to the pan. Mom, we were supposed to make it, we were supposed to let it simmer for 10 minutes before you added the pork. Oh well. Well, you know what? I, really, I think that if you put the pork in, the, 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 
simmering of the sauce as they get into the pork better and tastier. So, yeah, so obviously we're not um, following the recipe to that. <laughs> we never do. Okay, so cassava, I put about three quarters of a cup of cassava here. Cassava flour. Um, and I'm also going to use quinoa flour because I try to watch my carbs. Um, oops, 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 hold on. So this is about half a cup of cassava, or quinoa flour. Oh, sorry, like half and half. Okay, so, what else? Now remember cassava and quinoa, they don't have any gluten in them, so the, there's, there's no binder hardly in it, so that they tend to be crumbly when you cook them, and it's just, you know, just like grainy and stuff. So to replace the gluten, I use psyllium husk, and um, psyllium husk is powder from the psyllium seed, and um, it's a, it, it just absorbs a lot of water, and so it acts like a binder. Um, that was about, ooh, one tablespoon? I don't know. Okay. Another thing that you can use as a binder is konjac flour. And this is no calories in it. And it's a, um, it's a soluble plant fiber, Japanese soluble plant fiber. And um, they use this to make the calorie-free noodles, rice, and stuff like that. And, uh, Oh, I probably shouldn't have put that in with the psyllium husk. Then would be double bound. Oh well. Okay, we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, I have water at the back of the back of Okay. And then some salt. Um, that's my little Thing here. I'm going to stir the dry ingredients together and I'm making a well inside it. Okay. Well, I'm going to stir it a little more until it looks like it's really incorporated. Okay. Now I'm going to put water in the middle. I don't know, that looks like about a quarter of a cup and I'm gonna put a little bit of oil I don't know that looks like about two tablespoons to I don't know we'll figure it out later anyway so you want to mix it from the inside out and obviously there's not enough water in it <laughs> Well, we'll put more oil too. Whoops. Whoops. Okay. So when it gets to be about this consistency, I would say it's almost like you're making pie, right? You go in with your hands and start to push the dough together. And if it doesn't come together real well, that means you need a little bit more water. Be more patient. Hmm? Be more patient. It will come together. Or be patient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, which I am not. You still think it's going to come together? Yeah, it's going to be some oil. Different, it's different than flour. Because flour, I think, oil. Well, yeah, because flour has a lot of gluten in it. Okay. I'm just going to keep adding stuff until it makes sense to me. <laughs> okay, so no, 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 this is good. This is good. I think it needs a little bit more oil. I'm just, like, making this up as I go along, folks. Okay, then um, these are stewed enough. I'm gonna add the tomato, the potatoes. The what? Oh, you're gonna add the potatoes. Pre-boiled pre potatoes. Potatoes are already cooked, Mom.
I don't know how much water is in here and how much oil. So you just feel it, yeah. I'm just like crushing it up. So this is the dough. It's a little too sticky for me. You know, I would add more flour, but I don't want to mess it up. Or should I just like wait and let it sit for a bit? And let the cassava and the quinoa soak up the water. I'd like to ask the audience, should I just, should I add more flour or should I just let it sit for a bit? Hi Olympia. Hi Olympia. Eh, I think it's okay. So ideally you want to let this sit and let the water and the flour sort of come together and do something. You know, let the flour soak up. Um, I'm going to remove these things. So, I think this is it. You're just going to stew it up for like a, a, a few more minutes and it will be ready for tasting. <laughs> is it, um, has it been incorporated, like the flavors and yes. stuff? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So, back to the dough. The quinoa cassava tortilla dough. Gluten-free, egg-free, corn-free, soy-free, and I think that one is gluten-free, corn-free, soy-free, egg-free as well, right, Mom? Mom? Yes, dear. The dish is corn-free, gluten-free, soy-free, egg-free, dairy-free, and yes, right? everything you can eat. Yeah, yeah everything <laughs> that I can eat. Yay! Okay. All right, so here I have... A tortilla press. Okay, tortilla press. You can buy this anywhere. Um, these are the new cast iron ones. I've seen some really nice, like, wooden ones that people have made, like handmade tortilla presses, and they're just gorgeous. But I, I you know, this is all I have right now. Okay, and these are two um, silicone sheets. You can use parchment paper because you don't want it to stick to the press. Okay, so once you got your dough, you want to separate them into little balls, like this, depending on how big you want your tortillas. This is a little too big for me. And I'm gonna put it in the middle of the tortilla press this down and push. Then you wait a bit to let everything just flatten out in there. Okay. And there it is. Ta-da! So. Uh-oh, it's not peeling off. Oh my gosh, not peeling off. Oh wait, no it is. Hmm. Okay, so now see that it's really binding together because even if there's no gluten in it. And the reason is because there's psyllium husk and konjac flour. You can do either or, or add both, I don't know. So now once it's done, I have a hot um, iron skillet, cast iron skillet at the stove. And I'm just going to throw it down there. While that's going on, whoops, watch out. I'm going to put some oil on the top because I don't want it to get crusty. And really it just takes a little, one or two minutes on each side. I'm going to do this. Okay. How are we doing on your stew, Mom? It's done. Don't show the dirty. Oh. Is it done? Yeah. Wow, that's fast. Like, and you can taste it. I think that liquid smoke work. It worked, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mmm, oh. that's very good. Give me one taste. It's not that hot. 
Okay. Mm. I'm going to serve this with the tortillas. Fun fact about tortillas. During Diego Rivera's and Frida Kahlo's wedding, you know, both Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo were part of the Communist Party in Mexico. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The Nationalist. Mga Nationalista. Okay. Um, so when they got married, they were anti-bourgeois. And so Diego Rivera did not want any silverware in his wedding reception. They only had um, they only had spoons, enamel spoons for their oyster soup, but everything else needed to be eaten by hand. By hand with a tortilla. <laughs> and that's why I decided, you know what, that's a good story. I'm gonna make tortillas today. Because we're gonna eat this pork soup with tortilla. And you know what's good with that? With this one will be like uh, the, the rice and beans. Rice I and think, beans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're so good with it, I think. I, I wonder if there's a recipe for rice and beans. I'm mm -hmm. sure there is in there. There's I mean, in her book. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so here's my other tortilla. <gasps> Isn't that pretty? I needed to clean my cast iron skillet. Sorry. But that's what it looks like now. Okay? But that's the first one. We always throw the first one out anyway, right? You want to cook one in here? What? The cook one, tortilla. Over here? It's an ugly tortilla. Huh? It's an ugly tortilla right now. <laughs> it is because it's the first one. No, it's not ugly. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, okay, mom doesn't think it's ugly, so that's fine. So I just put the next tortilla in. And again, going to brush with oil. If y'all are looking at the oven, the stove clock, please don't pay attention. It's not the right time. Okay. Why is this off? I don't know. You turn it off. There. Okay. Scooch. No. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So. The first tortilla, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to open and cut it. look at that. It's it's quinoa flour, but it has the texture of a whole wheat or um, some other kind of tortilla. Alright? Quinoa is very, tastes very planty. You know, because quinoa is actually broccoli seeds, right? Or it's from the broccoli. It's the same family as the broccoli. It tastes a little bit like beans, like made from beans. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's got that nice flavor to it. Um, feels like you're eating a tree. <laughs> okay, mm, that's good. Um, one thing we do when we cook is we taste a lot. <laughs> I feel like this needs to incorporate more. I don't. Yeah, well, it's good, right? Yeah. I would love it to have more about chipotle. More what? The spices. <laughs> Which one? Chipotle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, this is good. Yeah, right? Like to eat this. And so it's all good carbohydrates too, complex carbohydrates, has a lot of fiber. Um, although the cassava does have a lot of um, like uh, carbohydrates in it, like 28 grams per quarter of a cup or something like that. Um, it's the good kind of carbs. I think we can make a party dish of this. 
a party dish. Yeah. When you have, you have the tortilla, you have the, the pork stew, and yeah. then you can make the uh, Filipino, um, what you call that, um, turon as dessert. Uh huh. Oh, that will all go. Okay. And with with uh, with also rice and beans. Yeah. Great. So, so we'll do it next time. When, every, when everybody's vaccinated, which by the way, I got my first vaccine yesterday. Mom got her first vaccine, what, three, four, three, four, four and a five bar, yeah. So, so um, I'm going to have my next one like in two weeks. Next week sometime. Yeah, next week sometime. Okay. Shall we play it, Mom? Yes, dear. This is really good. I didn't imagine this good, this good, you know. Now, okay, let's see if it's the same as the picture. Was it? Let me see. Ah. <laughs> but it look. Yeah, well, the, you know what's not showing is the chorizo. The, the chorizo is like rounding, round thing. Well, it looks like the chorizo is a little bit, um, uh, Toasted. Toasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this one is not, so. Right. But it's good. Well, it it tastes good. Lot. Everything's cooked. It makes a lot of difference, you know, the chorizo. Yeah. Remember, I used to go to California to get the, to go in a Filipino store to get the chorizo de Bilbao. Yeah. Just to cook, you know. Yeah. And I think those will work with this one. This one is a better looking tortilla. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, I should mention this beautiful plate was made by a former student named Justin Lin at the Pittsburgh Glass Center. All right, so the only thing about these tortillas is you have to cook them one at a time. And um, I don't know. I mean, I don't mind doing it. You remember when we were in Barcelona, when we came back from Barcelona and br I brought home a, a whole like, uh, piece of uh, the, the uh, chorizo. Remember that? I wrap it up <laughs> and put it in my You put it in your luggage? <laughs> I think I blocked that memory. <laughs> but, you know, that one was like, we can't buy it here. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, maybe in New York, but here. Yeah, you can buy anything in New York, mm -hmm. I think. Okay, so, so actually these tortillas are pretty good on their own. Yeah. Mm. So, we're going to serve this. Shall we plate, Mama? Put it in here. Or we plate tayo ng isa. We'll just plate one. Okay. No? Yes? It does taste good. It just doesn't look the same. Well, because of the chorizo, a round thing, that's what we don't have. What we have is a pambasi. And I cut it like in cubes instead of, you know, round. Okay. So while we're waiting for mom to put that in and, um, the tortilla to cook. I'm going to read the rest of the uh, menu of Frida's birthday party. Shrimp broth. That's it. Shrimp broth. What's it? It's, it's something called a tablecloth stainer, which I have no idea what it is, but it's 
pork, herbs, chilies, tomatoes, apples, quince, peaches, and all of that, all stewed together. It, it's literally called a tablecloth dinner, the shrimp broth. Shrimp escabeche. Mm. Escabeche? They have escabeche. Mm. Oh, it's so much like Philippines. Well, and Chinese sweets and sours. Spanish, really, which is, has a lot of influence in the Philippines. Chicken escabeche. And there's a marinade here. The pork stew from Puebla. Pork with nopales. What's that? Nopales. I don't know. Nopales. What are nopales? Oh, beans. Mm. Oh, here's a nice picture of it. And the classic vinyl tablecloth, right? Fish baked in achuyo leaves. What are achuyo? Does anybody know what these are? Acuyo, asuyo? No. If you do, would you mind putting it in? Mole poblano. Hi, look. Hello. Do you want to try? I have to wash my hands. Okay. Chilled pig's feet. Chilled pig's feet. Eight pig's feet. Wash and cut it. Boom! Over here. Boom! It's still okay. Okay, Mom, you can plate that now. I'm already here. You can. It's really delicious. It's delicious. I will I will try to get the chorizo next time. We'll buy the real chorizo. Okay. So you know something curious about these recipes is I don't see any cilantro in the recipes. Which is kind of odd because when you here in the States you talk about Mexican food, there's always cilantro and stuff. So anyway, I bought cilantro, just assuming there was going to be cilantro in there, but there isn't any cilantro in there. It just says herbs in general. So, okay. My plate canna. My plate canna. Just put it on top? I guess. I don't know. How would you serve it? I guess because the way they serve this is family style, right? So just put this on the side. Oh, here's our guinea pig. I'm just, I'm just gonna get water. Don't you wanna try it? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. So I'm just gonna keep on making these tortillas. What time is it now? 12.55, so we have five more minutes before the end. So I, I, yeah, I, I just wanna say that I really absolutely loved the exhibit, and if you all get a chance, you should go visit it. Um, one thing that I missed at the exhibit that I wish there was more of were photos of Frida's kitchen. There weren't any. Um, so, and I think that a lot of the photos depicted Frida Kahlo as this bohemian artist, you know, sort of wild woman, modern woman of that age, um, who was, you know, the spouse of this famous painter and things like that. But she also was a, a solid caregiver. She took care of Diego a lot, cooked him a lot of meals, um, took care of her, um, her stepdaughters um, and her parents and things like that. And we really didn't see that much. We don't think about Frida Kahlo as a caregiver because we think of her more as this sort of artist, this you know, bohemian artist um, with this crazy lifestyle. But in reality, Frida Kahlo was um, a phenomenal caregiver. And I think that we should all, you know, try to see the caregiver in all of us um, when we look at these exhibits and stuff. Um, stay tuned. Okay, next week, same time, same Instagram page. Carolina Loyola Garcia is doing the um, is doing the Instagram takeover for the Frick Museum. I don't know what she's making, but I'm sure excited to see it. And make sure you stay tuned every Saturday at this time for the next eleven weeks. Each not white collective sister is going to be doing their own um, cooking session, and um, 
lots of yummy food. Um, thank you again to the Frick Museum. Don't forget to visit the Frida Kahlo Museum. Or, I'm sorry, the Frida Kahlo <laughs> exhibit. <laughs> Frida Kahlo Intimate Portraits at the Frick Museum. Um, they're open Wednesdays to Sundays from 11 to 5. Time ticketing is really important and they go fast. So, what? And, and I guess that's it, and here is the, let's just show the, okay, somebody has to taste it with the tortilla. That will be me. Okay. And I'm not going to put any cilantro because it's not in the book. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really good. It's good. Okay. Is it, is it one o'clock now? Because I want to eat now. I don't want to eat in front of the camera. <laughs> don't forget to visit Not White Collective exhibit down at the Space Gallery. We are the global majority. We're right out. We're outside the. Um, we're on the window displays, and we'll be exhibiting in person during the Three Rivers Arts Festival in June. So stay tuned for that. Also, don't forget to visit Anthropology of Motherhood, my project, and it's all about the culture of care. Anthropologyofmotherhood.com, not whitecollective.com, and take care, everyone. We love you. Bye. I think, I don't know how you turn it off.